Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Cashman. Mark, thank you for taking the time to uh, tell us about your insights and your process. And we're just going to jump right into the questions. And I, I think we kind of sandwich it with the hardest first and last. Okay. Uh, what do you see is the role of a demo in 2024? And well, the role of a demo, I always remind my anybody who I produce a demo for, the majority of people who will be listening to your demo will not be agents. They will be people in a position to hire you. But most of those people are not agents. Just a small percentage of those people will be agents listening to your demo. The vast majority of people listening to your demo will be independent producers. Producers in a position to hire you as a performer. Occasionally, your demo will be listened to by an agent if it's up for, if you're looking for representation and you're submitting for representation, or somebody says, hey, let me walk your demo in, et cetera, et cetera. But that's, you know, and, and that's, your demo is going to be able to be used for a lot of things. So the role of a demo is multi, is, is multi, it, it, there, there are many reasons for you, for you to have a demo. But your demo, again, what is demo short for? Demo short for demonstration. What's well, a demonstration? A demonstration of your abilities. It's a showcase of your abilities. That's what your demo is supposed to be, to showcase your uh, uh, voice talents and voice acting abilities. In depending upon the length, depending upon some, I, I always say have more than one um, um, length, have a 60 second demo, uh, have a 90 second demo, and possibly a two minute demo, depending upon what the demo is. You just want to, there, and now demos are, are niche. There's commercials, there's audiobooks, there's uh, animation, video game that separate. Both characters, but both separate, different genres completely. Uh, there's narration in all its forms, e-learning, explainer videos, all that thing, all these niche areas, uh, which is really, you have to really have in your bag of tricks. You have to be multi-talented. Um, that said, the role of a demo is, is, is just enormous. It's your, what I call your audio calling card. And so it, 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 your demo is going to come in so handy. People are going to book you just off your demo. Oh, that spot you did for so-and-so, we want you for, the, for this. We're just going to book you right now. That's the voice we want. Here's the thing. Don't even have to audition. Booked you right off your demo. Never know where it's coming out of left field. So yeah. your demo has got to be sound great. It's got to hold up. It's got to hold up. It's what I call what has to have a shelf life. Mm -hmm. A shelf life. You're not going to be spending a, a thousands of dollars on a new demo every year unless you're, you know, independently wealthy and you do all sorts of things. It's going to happen every, you know, every five years, possibly 10, every five years or so. Uh, you'll update your stuff. You'll replace stuff, new stuff that's come on, stuff that's been on the air. People know you. You'll replace that demo and the demo will evolve and morph and change but the role of a demo 2024 is the role that, that it always has had it's your audio calling card that's what it is and that demo will get you in the door it will get you in the door at a party but once you get to the party they're going to say okay dance sing perform it'll get you in the door but then you got to prove that you are well uh, that, that you are, should be invited to the party yeah. That's basically when you're going for agency, agency representation. Oh, you got a demo? Good. Let's see what you can do with this. Okay. Yeah. yeah, your demo sounds great. Lots of demos sound great. Let's see what you can do in real time right now. Go. That's when the rubber meets the road. And that's why I always say when you do a demo, when you produce a demo, you have to live up to that demo. You have to be every single day as good as, if not better than that demo. In fact, when somebody hears that demo, you say, oh, I'm not only as good as that demo, I'm better than that demo. And you have to live up to that demo every single day. So you can't get rusty. You got to keep on strengthening, keeping those skills going. But you have to live up to that demo. Now, wow, that demo sounds great. You sound that good? Yeah, I do. And then prove it. Okay, good. Go. You have Let to be ready right, to go. Right into my next question. What criteria do a talent have to meet before you'll produce their demo for them? Well, 
they've got to have skill sets that, that, that are requisite for this area of performance. When I talk about skill sets, uh, I automatically think of my report card. I'm the only voiceover, voice acting teacher in the world who, who gives my students a report card. I've been doing that for now 24 years. I am the only one. And I grade my students in eight different categories on a one to 10 scale, not A, B, C, D, F, because that's bullshit. And I, and, and I grade my students in eight different categories. And the reason I do that is because when a director or producer is directing somebody in the, in the studio, they are unconsciously grading that person on, in those eight different categories. Breathing, volume control, articulation, navigation, what I call your eye, brain, mouth control, interpretation, acting, and taking direction. Those are the eight categories that every single producer unconsciously grades every single performer when they go into the booth. And that's what my report card's based on. Nobody else, everybody else after your course is done, said, good luck. Don't let the door hit you on the ass. But no, when a person finishes my course, I give them a report card and they see it's an x-ray of their skill sets. And just like every report card you've ever gotten, you can get another one and do better. Right? Okay. That report so, card is not a, an epitaph. It's, it's just a report on your current skill sets, an objective analysis of your current skill sets, where you're strong, where you're weak, what you need to work on, what you're good at already. Here's your strengths. Here's your weaknesses. If you've got an Achilles heel, I'll find it. <laughs> and you know it's really funny you know it's funny the other day i said that to to, to a prospective student and i got a blank i got uh, uh, there was blank stare and i realized it went right over his head and i realized he didn't know who achilles was and i assumed he knew who achilles was i have to i have to remember that said, uh, so those rubrics again what criteria must a talent have they've got to be able to perform and I've got to be able to hear them. And if they're not ready, I will tell them, you're not ready. I have no compunction whatsoever telling somebody they're not ready because I don't want them to waste their time, waste their money. And, and, and I've been doing this for, I've been teaching for now 24 years. I've been uh, writing and producing and directing for over 45 years. So at this particular point, I have no problems whatsoever telling somebody, hey, you got something. Keep, you keep it going or you need some work, my friend. And most people hear it and some people can't. They can't handle the truth. And uh, that, uh, uh, But I'm known in the industry as somebody who absolutely has no tolerance for bullshit. So I, I just I just won't waste people's money. Again, being as, as old as I am and as, as experienced as I am, I know t uh, uh, time is short. Life's short. You know, just you got to make the most of it and you got to be honest with people and they most people appreciate it. some people can't yeah. handle it, but but you got to have chops you've got to have chops you got to have a, 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 a thing for a, a thing for this now um that said my your next question leads into do you require coaching before you'll produce the demo if they're it, well first of all if they need coaching if, if i or if i say you're not ready then Yes, definitely. They they should. I always say, do coaching. I don't care who it's with. In other words, they don't have. I don't. When I say you're not ready, you don't have to coach with me. You coach with anybody. You're not ready. Whoever you coach with, get them. Help. Ho hope. Hopefully, they'll get you ready. But you're not ready right now, right? You can coach with me or anyone, which 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 is fine. Now, once some I know somebody's ready to do. A, a, a demo, somebody who, let's say, I've worked with for a while and they're finally ready, somebody who is recommended to me and and uh, they're uh, sometimes I do coaching for people who are doing their demos. In other words, they, they're getting ready to do a demo with a particular producer and they say, who do you recommend for coaching? And they recommend me. I produce I, I coach their demo. I coach them for their demos. Okay. And that usually uh, that's usually two sessions. The first session, 
Um, and if I'm, and of course, it's if it's for me, if I'm doing the demo, that's a whole different process. But if they're doing it for somebody else, I coach them two sessions. The first one, we get everything up to speed and we basically choreograph the entire piece. I call it vocal choreography. We choreograph the entire piece or arrange the entire piece. It's usually six elements running 70, 75 seconds. That's typical typical commercial demo. So the first session, we will choreograph and arrange. The second session, we'll finesse because I one, one criteria, criterion that I demand from every person who's putting a demo together is they have to be off book. They've got to memorize mm -hmm. their copy. No reading allowed. They cannot read. No reading. They cannot read one word. If they can't memorize 75 seconds worth of copy, they are not worth their salt as a performer. I'm sorry. Have you ever seen any person come on stage with a script in their hand and read? No. Have you ever seen anyone come on camera with a script in their hand and read? No. They're all off book. If they can be off book, you can be off book for 75 seconds. <laughs> and that's one of the things that I demand, not just from for when I'm producing their demo, but when somebody else when they're doing somebody else's demo, get off book. There's no need to read. There's no need to read. You're doing six 12 second excerpts, elements, six 12 second elements. That's what you're doing. That's all you're doing. How, how hard is that to perform? You can't remember six 12 second stories? Are you serious? If you can't remember that, this is not the job for you, period. Now that's me. I'm sorry. It's, that's not a hard, that's not no, a, no apologies. a big ask. Your process is your process. That's not a big ask though. No. People go, oh, I have to be off book. Yes, you have to be off book. If you've done any stage work, why should that frighten you? Seriously. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. And if you haven't done any stage work, get used to it. Sometimes you gotta have, you, uh, you, you gotta get off the page. Just get off the goddamn page and there's no need to read. There's just none. Okay. This is performance. It's performance. And it's, it's a special kind of performance too. We can get into that. That's a whole other, a whole other discussion. That's the, that's the coaching conversation. <laughs> that's a coaching thing. That's the acting thing. That's, that's the yeah. performance thing. But that said, so, so demo wise, that's the only, that's my main criterion is that they be off book when they're okay. performing their actual, when, they, when it comes to the actual recording session, they're off book. All right. When it comes to um, choosing the scripts, yeah. do you write custom scripts? Do you use existing work? Yeah, I do both. Um, okay. uh, let me see here, because uh, you asked some of these questions here and I answered them. Let me see, hold on, hold on. And I, let's see, uh, did the custom script. Yeah. I, I do both. What I do is, is uh, I customize existing copy. Okay. So in other words, so so I I, I work on and, and I and I have to because um all the existing copy are, is usually thirty or sixty second uh, mm -hmm. pieces that need to be distilled down to literally ten to twelve seconds, anywhere from ten to fifteen seconds approximately. So um uh, so with that in mind, uh, so I basically I, I customize existing copy, um uh, stuff that is not currently on the air, but stuff that was on the air. Okay. Recently on the air, but not currently on the air. So there's so when people hear it, they go, "Oh yeah, they're familiar with it." There's there's a familiarity already built into it. Oh yeah, I heard that on the air, and they say, "Oh yeah, you did a great job. You did a great job on that." That's what they say to the person if they're listening to it. Yeah, that was a good campaign you did. You did a good job. <laughs> they did. <laughs> Nice. Um, uh, so, so, uh, uh, customized now, uh, uh, that said, um, 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 I, I, again, the copy needs to not sound red. How do you sound like you're not reading? Don't read. And that's basically it. Now there's a footnote here. Uh, not every, a demo producer <laughs> provides you with copy for the demo. I'm not going to say who. All I'm going to say is 
I don't understand why a production company would offer to produce your commercial demo and have you, the actor, come up with the copy. And I, my response is always, we're actors, not copywriters. You know, we, 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 we just, you know, it's just not our bailiwick. Uh, right. I think if you're, if you say you're going to produce a commercial demo, pr provide the copy. Now, most for com uh, commercial uh, production companies do. They provide the copy. Uh, they work with the person. They go, here's the, the copy for you. This is the copy we've picked and chosen for you. And and, and then the person says, okay, uh, that looks good. And they might tweak it here and there. But basically, that's the package that they get. I, of course, do things differently. And so when I'm producing a, a demo for for someone, I provide them with a ton of copy for them to okay. choose from. And we spend a session, one session, just going over the selection of the copy for that particular genre, whether it's narration, whether it's commercial, whether it's animation. In other words, if we're ending up with a half a dozen elements on the demo, which is typical, I will provide three times that. I'll provide 18 different elements for them to choose from to whittle down to six. And we and together we we choose the best six out of a whole selection of spot of, of pieces that were customized just for them, cast just for them. So you're picking the copy to really highlight their their strong suits. Oh well that's it. But the, the whole point is is I'm picking copy that 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 showcases their signature voice and their personality and the way they express themselves and and their and their age the, the what i call the age of their voice print mm -hmm. how old they sound not how old they are right how old they sound and 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 so so basically it's 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 customizable it's customized i i there's no i don't do any cookie cutter anything and not only do i provide them uh with uh, choices for copy uh but in the act in the post-production i provide them with with choices of music that's the other thing that i do that that nobody else does um when you go to a production company they they give you the copy here's the copy for you they record you they take the tracks they do all their music and sound effects and they say and here's the finished thing what do you think and do you tweak it here and tweak it there could i have my voice a little hotter there and a little thing etc and they tweak it and then boom done that's how everybody else works. Not me. I refuse to do that. So not only do we do copy selection, spend a, 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 a short session on on selecting copy, and they have again huge choice. Of, they have choices, uh, lots of stuff to choose from. Then we have two prep sessions, two prep sessions, and and again for commercial one to again. Uh, choreograph and arrange and the next to make sure that's our dress rehearsal or second session then the performance the recording session and then to put the ice the cherry on top of the cake we have after then i take those tracks and i uh, spend a, a a day or two editing those tracks we have a four hour post-production session where i zoom in with my students with my with my client the person who's doing I'm doing the demo for into the studio into a commercial studio here in Los Angeles with an engineer who's and we do a whole pro tool session a 4 hour post production pro tool session where they see their demo being built from the ground up wow. with their tracks with their music and sound effects and everything with the mix and they see all the magic 4 hour session Real time, live, everything's recorded so they can go back and watch it again and see. And they see their demo being built from the ground up. Here's your oh. VO tracks. Here's the music tracks. And by the way, I provide anywhere from uh, five to 10 different music tracks for each element for them to choose from. So that means they have anywhere from 60 to 70 different pieces of music 
to choose from for each one of their tracks. They listen, they get to listen and, 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 and judge. We judge together. It's really fun. It's really fun. So let's so say they're very collaborative. Oh, it's completely collaborative. They get it. They tell me their input. They like this. They like that, et cetera, et cetera. I like it here. And then same thing with sound effects. We put in the sound effects. We move them around, et cetera, et cetera. And, and of course, the engineer is the, is the maestro down there in the studio. They're putting everything together and they're just doing it. They're doing it blindingly fast. And then and, and cutting and pasting and doing all the but the whole thing is the student the, the my client the, the demo star is involved from soup to nuts with me. Okay, and you've got a team that you work with, so you're it's not me. Producing... It's it's me, and when and when we're ready, the engineer at the studio. Okay, and that's it. All right. And that's, um... So as far as cost, and you can answer, you don't have to answer this yeah. one. It's a no, it's on my change. website. It's interesting. Okay. Some people don't, uh, they're, they're not very transparent with cost. I'm totally always transparent with cost. My cost, okay. I cost more than the average bear because of all the things that I bring to the experience. So, so the cost of my demo is $3,000 complete from beginning okay. to end. And that again includes material, all the materials, no matter what, no matter what the genre is. Um, and I don't, by the way, I don't produce all genres. Okay. Um, um, I can, but I coach in all genres, but I don't okay. produce in all genres because some people, uh, uh, I just, I hear some of their demo production and I go, oh my God, that's just so much better. So there's so, <laughs> so many colleagues, I will say, like, if you want a, a video game production, uh, uh, go to, uh, uh, go to Chuck Duran or, 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 or Mark Grau. Uh, uh, you know, uh, people I know and, and colleagues I know who just have, they've got studios and uh, again, these people, uh, I always say, know more in their pinky than most people know in their whole body. So, so they are, so I don't do audio, I don't do uh, animation or video game. I do commercial narration, the, the ultimate uh, long form narration audiobook, um, and and the other narration, e-learning, explainer videos, document, whatever the case may be, but but uh, but uh, not the, not the specialties. Um, I don't do promos. Um, uh, uh, Chuck Durant's great for promos, um, and and a couple of other people just fa fabulous promo direct uh, uh, producers. I don't do trailers, um, um, but you but there's amazing tra trailer producers out there if you want to. Uh, so again, commercial narration, audiobook, those are the demos uh, uh, that I do. Okay. And the uh, other piece of bread on our interview sandwich, the other hard question is, why should talent choose Mark Cashman to work with? Oh, uh, well, well, as I mentioned before, uh, uh, 24 years of demo production, uh, 45 plus years of uh, writing, producing, directing talent. Um, and, but as I said earlier, the proof of the pudding is in the tasting. So on my website, there's a page that says VO Demo Production, and you get to hear demos that I've done. And it's the easiest thing in the world. You click the thing, oh, that sounds good. That's the kind of demo I'd like. I'd like to just uh, ask a follow up on this. Nah, uh, that doesn't really, that's really not my cup of tea. And that's the beauty of the marketplace. You get to listen and you get to hear exactly what you're getting. But of course, you hear the finished product. But then you understand, again, considering all the things we talked about, my demo production process is much more involved. And actually, there are some people who say, you know what, Mark, I don't want to get that involved. I just <laughs> want to make this a lot simpler. I just want to just uh, send out my money and, and have them send me what they think is good for me and let me do it and give it to me and that's it. And there are lots of people who can accommodate that. Absolutely. And they're, and they're less expensive than I am. I'm not the least expensive. I'm not the most expensive. Believe it or not, there are people who are a lot more expensive than I am. Um, and that said, um, you have to find out exactly how much and exactly what you get. Now, do you, is a, it, again, when we talked about before, do you get what you pay for? Sometimes. 
sometimes you do. I don't say all the time. It's not, it's not possible. I, I was just complaining the other day, this morning, actually, about something that I did not get what I paid. <laughs> I, I got a shoddy, I got a shoddy product back. And, and then, uh, I did, I did, but that happens. That happens all the time. With me, no, that's not that the case only because I've been doing this for, for too long. I have a reputation to live up to, fortunately. And, um, and again, the proof of the pudding's in the tasting. It's on my, my website, cashmancommercials.com. And, and you just uh, click on the page that says VO Demo Production. And it pretty much goes over everything that I said to you today. But if anybody ever wants to ask me any questions, mark at cashmancommercials.com, M-A-R-C. And uh, I, there's an embarrassingly uh, an embarrassing amount of information. Not it's not embarrassing information. It's embarrassing amount of information. Well, when you Google my name, uh, uh, but you'll go to my website or my Square page, e either one, and 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 I could answer any questions, anytime. The demo, going back to your original question, Jeff, the demo is supposed to showcase your signature voice, and it's supposed to showcase your you telling stories that's really what you're doing and in, in this particular for commercials obviously telling commercial stories for narration telling narration stories or different stories whatever the case would be audiobooks telling but you're always telling stories and people forget that our mode of acting voice acting is different than any other acting in the world and people don't realize the fact that when actors are on stage they are interacting with people when actors are on camera they're still interacting with people right even puppeteers are interacting with other people right next to them but we are the only ones who perform without interacting with people we're cut off we're isolated. We even create our own isolation booths, our own little rooms, our own little closets. We literally cut ourselves off, not just figuratively, but literally are cut off from the human connection that every other actor in the world experiences. Does that affect your acting? You bet it does. Of course it does. Acting in a vacuum? It's almost an oxymoron. <laughs> if not, a complete oxymoron acting in a vacuum. And so we've got to do things. Our demo, the, the demo that we put together has got to reach out to the listener and do something more than just hear them, hear a person say words clearly. It's so much more than that. So the material, the content, and the performance is, again, it's on a different, it's a different dimension. We can see and almost touch people on stage. We can see people on camera, but you can't, nobody can see us. They can't see our facial expressions. They can't see our body language. So the things that they hear on that demo or the things that have to reach out to them, that have to be able to reach out to them emotionally, be able to have that resonant tone. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Jen. You take care.